So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. Welcome to iPad OS 15 beta one review. Now I'm going to cover most of the features in this video that you're really going to notice. Not every single feature that was included that would take forever. There's quite a few behind the scenes, but most of the things that you're going to really notice here. So we're on iPad OS 15. The download was around about five gigabytes for this product. So it is gonna take up a bit of space. And keep in mind, this is the beta. I have been noticing over the past day of usage that there is some stutter uh, here and there. There's no real lag or anything like that, but it is a little bit choppy. So sometimes animations won't look as smooth as like when the official does come, obviously it's a beta. But if you were expecting like perfection and performance, it's not gonna happen at least right now. Okay guys, so taking a look at the iPad OS version, you can see it's 19A, 5261W and we are doing this on the iPad Pro 11 from 2020, not the M1 CPU for this one. Okay, so let's take a look at the new and improved multitasking. So when you're in the app switcher, you can now take an application and just make a split screen right there from the app switcher. Of course, you have your usual, you know, split screen ability where you can kind of drag the apps across. Up here at the top, you will find this three dot menu up here. If you click this, you'll be able to go like so and find an application to split. So we're gonna go ahead and click the calculator and it will split those applications. You can also bring this application back to a full screen if you want it back to a full screen and then go back to the app switcher and of course split again. Now you can also use this new thing called the shelf. So if we go to Safari, you click this and it'll show you, do you wanna open that previous one or do you wanna open a new window? and you can go on and on like so. This will also work in other Apple applications. So very cool, they're a new way to multitask on here. I really like the one in the App Switcher where you can split applications right from the App Switcher itself. That's pretty handy. As I was trying to do that before and it didn't work, you can also bring it off to the side and kind of work on an application over here. Of course, you can still swipe it off to the left if you're doing something full screen and you need more space. So overall, gotta say, Multitasking is majorly improved here for the iPad OS. Now, another thing that is all new here for iPad OS is the app library. And unlike the iPhone on iPad OS, it does live right here within the dock. Of course, you can still get to it off to the left. And this is one area where I find the beta is a little bit slow. Sometimes it, it looks a little choppy, the animation, but it's pretty good for our first beta. I will say app library being here does clean things up a, a bit. And you'll also be able to go here and hide these, these pages right here. You'll be able to move them around as well right here. So very cool. And so if you wanna clean up your iPad experience, you got the app library and you can now tweak these pages and hide them out and stuff like that to just clean up the overall iPad OS. In addition, you're noticing widgets are being placed all over the screen. Not only are widgets able to be placed on the screen, they are larger now for iPad OS. Take a look at the size of these widgets. They're much larger than what you're gonna find on iOS. And the reason for that is because you don't wanna have tiny widgets on a big iPad canvas. So let's go ahead and click the plus sign just like you would on iOS 14. And you'll see right here, look at all the widget support right here. Not only that, there are new widgets that are included here, such as the contacts widget right here, which is pretty neat if you wanna add some contacts and different sizes are available. Also, Game Center widget. You also have a Find My widget that's available as well to share your location. And of course, the size does get larger as you go through those. Now you will have also App Store widget over here. So pretty cool if you wanna see some up and coming applications or some applications that you might find interesting. Very nice. So not only do you have widget support, you also have suggestions and you do have bigger widgets, like I said earlier, just having all of this does really improve, you know, just the customization aspect of the iPadOS experience. The next thing I will say about iPadOS 15 is it only comes with one wallpaper. So you can see right here, it's this one right here. So if you were looking for, you know, something majorly new in the wallpaper, wallpaper section, it's not gonna be majorly new there. Now you can see that it will change depending on if it's in dark mode or if it's in the daytime mode or whatever, you'll see right there, it does get a bit different. So those are some of the very noticeable features on iPad OS 15. In addition, you will have the same focus modes that come from iPhone. So you can set up personal, driving, sleep, and work, and you can also have 
can create a new focus here, your own custom one as well. So this I think is gonna be very useful on iPad, especially for people who use iPad OS to get their work done. I think the work one's gonna be great and the reading one is gonna be great as well. It will silence the notifications and you won't miss out on important contacts. So if important people that you set up are trying to text you or whatever, it'll get there and it will share a status with other iMessage users that you're doing work or you're doing something personal, you just can't get back to them at this current time. So I think this is gonna help people to focus on whatever the task at hand. And I really like how Apple is trying to make sure that you're not letting your devices take over you and kind of let you control the device in a way that it will help improve your productivity and focus. I really like how they're trying to do that here. Whereas, you know, it seems like some application makers and you know, software makers are trying to distract you and keep you on your product as long as possible. Now also within iPad OS 15, if we hold down the command key, you're gonna find yourself many different shortcuts with the command key, like go to the home screen, search, switch app, show doc, show app library, that's new right there. You can see multitasking app, switch your next app. So you'll see nice shortcuts to navigate across iPadOS 15 if you don't wanna use you know, your finger to do everything like a touch screen. So Apple further making this feel a little bit more like a laptop replacement here for iPad OS, especially if you're using the Magic Keyboard with your iPad Pro or your iPad Air 4. Now the next new feature comes in the way of the Apple Pencil. Now I absolutely love this new feature. So of course, you're gonna make sure your Apple Pencil is connected. It's called Quick Note. So we're gonna swipe from the corner and let's say you wanna go ahead and use a, you know, you wanna write down a number or jot something down really quickly here. Hopefully this is no one's number. I'm hoping that's not, but anyway, definitely can go jot something down like that. You could just save it and it saves into the quick note section within Apple Notes. So within Apple Notes, you'll see right here, I wrote upcoming videos in a quick note yesterday, iPadOS 15 beta one review, which you're watching right now. You'll find notes right here in a quick note folder. So it's not gonna get messed up and in between your other notes, it'll just store in its own quick note folder. So. Very similar to what we see on Samsung where you kind of can just use the S Pen to go ahead and take a quick note. Now you can just kind of pull it on iPad here as well from the corner. So that's gonna be very neat because sometimes you don't wanna write a full out note and get it messed up and mixed in with your other notes. You just wanna jot something down. Very smart idea, very happy this has arrived. In addition, now that we're talking about the Apple Pencil, if we scroll down here to Apple Pencil, so in the Apple Pencil settings, you can see that the right corner swipe, you can turn this off if you don't want it on. So if you find yourself, I don't know why you would accidentally trigger that. That's kind of a very forced action right here. I don't see people triggering it, but if you don't want it on, you do have the ability to turn it off. But anyway, very nice feature there. In addition, while we're talking about notes, you can use hashtag now in notes to go ahead and just make your notes easier to find. So you can see right there, I did put quick, hashtag quick note. So now if you search in the note section, so you can see right here at the bottom, it does say all tags in quick note. That's the tag I made. As you make more hashtags, you'll be able to find those notes within that specific hashtag very easily just by clicking that hashtag. And there it is right there. I was trying to write hard work, but I guess I was being a little bit sloppy right there. So definitely love this new note stuff. It just makes it easier to organize and more useful than ever before. Now, I'm not going to talk much about this because I covered it in my iPadOS beta or I iOS 15 beta one review, but you can create links and schedules for FaceTime. You also have SharePlay and within SharePlay, you'll be able to share media, different, you know, movies and things and pictures right within FaceTime itself. Basically everything included with FaceTime, including the portrait camera, which is also available on an iPad Pro right here. You can use this in FaceTime as well to focus on you during FaceTime. You see how it's blurring my background over there and it's just focusing on me. You can do this in FaceTime as well now. So communications updates to FaceTime are improved here. It's carried over from iOS 15. So there's also gonna be shared with you within applications as posted right here on Apple's website. I don't have many things right now that were shared just yet, but you can see TV, music, as well as podcast, news, safari, and photos. So, so essentially when people start sharing with you pictures, articles, music, stuff like that, within those specific applications, like news, for example, there is gonna be a section that says shared with you, and you'll be able to click that and go and find 
exactly what was shared with you so you don't got to go dig around it'll be a specific section within those applications to help you easier to find things now also you'll notice right here in ipad os just like in ios it does show you what focus mode you're in right here in addition to that you'll be able to click on that let's go ahead and click on that and change it right there as well if you want to go to sleep mode it'll let you know you're in sleep mode if you want to go here to driving mode, I don't know why you would have your iPad while driving, but hopefully you don't. But if you need it, there you go. Driving mode is available. And let's go back to personal right here. In addition, this does give you notifications summaries as well. So let's go back here into settings. We'll go to settings and we're going to scroll up here to notifications. And with the notifications, you'll see just like in iOS, you can schedule out your own summaries, notification summaries. We can schedule a delivery. You can get what's important based on time sensitive notifications. We'll hit continue and it'll show you which ones are coming in the most. Now mine all say zero because on my products, I typically turn off all notifications for better productivity and focus. So you're not seeing many on my specific iPad, but a lot of your notifications, you can group them. You can make them time sensitive. You can just make the summary a lot more organized. So it's not distracting you based on the time of day and which focus mode you are in. So very nice updates and notifications to help you further increase productivity and lower distractions. Good on Apple for this as well. Now, just like an iPad OS, Memoji stickers will now be available to have outfits and multicolor headwear. So I'm not really seeing the outfits just yet here in beta one. However, we're going to get more things you can do, more headwear, stuff like that to give you more of an expressive way to create this person. It's pretty cool. It's got a little bike helmet right there, but definitely giving you more ways to make Memoji a little bit more realistic. So cool on that one if you like that kind of stuff. All right, so I want to show you why you shouldn't download a beta. You can see that crash right there. Boom on Safari. This is why you shouldn't download a beta to Safari. And I want to show you if we can, if it doesn't crash on us again, I want to show you the new tab view. So you can see the tabs definitely are getting more compact, a little bit smaller. And then you could bring over here, you'll see right here, tabs right there. There's also the ability now to have tab groups as well. So let me go ahead and close this out. We'll swipe in. You'll see right here, we can add another tab there. Tabs right here. So tab groups right here. So you can kind of organize your tabs into their own group. So if you find that you're researching or you're browsing the web and you just get way too many tabs all cluttered up, I think iOS 15, iPad OS 15 is going to help out. It's going to be very similar on the iPhone experience as well. One difference with the iPhone though, is that the search bar is at the bottom, whereas on the iPad, it remains up top. You can see we got another crash right there. So there are some bugs here. Definitely not the fastest on beta one. Also, it keeps crashing, but you can search with your voice now. When that bug gets updated, <laughs> it's a beta, so I can't be too mad, but you're going to be able to search with your voice. Pretty cool here. In addition to that, I don't see them available just yet on my end, but you are going to have the ability to add extensions to Safari as well. Safari is performing like trash during my review right now, but you will be able to do that down the line just like you can on Mac OS because they are getting more similar. The ecosystem is getting more cohesive, more similar across product lines. And that brings me on to Apple Maps. You can see right here, Apple Maps, you can now look at it in the globe view, very interactive right here and as you get closer into the cities there's going to be bike lanes and stuff like that that do appear within the app itself so you're going to have quite a bit more detail when it comes to the ipad os experience on maps as well as on the iphone experience now it's only launching in select cities right now so give apple some time to get this together but they're going to have bus lanes bike lanes things like that to make the mapping experience much more interactive much more rich in detail. So just like with the iPhone, it's gonna have a visual lookup for recognizing objects as well as live text translation in photos. But right now it's not seeming to work very good for me in beta one. However, it will be having that. So do keep that in mind for iPad OS 15. Now spotlight search also gets much richer than it was before. So if you are gonna be doing anything when it comes to spotlight, it's gonna give you a lot more rich information. You can even search up celebrities now. So let's search up Billie Eilish, for example. And you'll see it's gonna give you like pretty much everything you need to know about these specific celebrities. So just kind of becoming more like a search engine up here within the you know search bar up there. So definitely in the spotlight search. So really giving you much more rich information in that aspect.
And a few more things. Within the Photos app, you will get interactive memories. You have the new Swift Playground on here where you can learn how to code. You can make your own apps right here on the iPad itself. And then you could submit them straight to the App Store. So pretty amazing how Apple is providing this right on the tablet itself. This is gonna be amazing for the future of app development. I really think this is pretty darn awesome. Now anyone could pick up an iPad, learn the code, and submit an app, and you could potentially have a groundbreaking new application in the world straight from your iPad at home. That's pretty amazing. So very, very much do appreciate that Apple did include that. I'm not gonna show it in this video, but there is universal control between iPad OS and Mac OS, Monterey, so you can put the Mac next to the iPad and kind of move applications, move your mouse between both of them very easily. And they're more synced up than some of those other applications that try to do that. So it's gonna be pretty amazing on that one. And some other things, you will be getting app privacy reports for applications. In addition to that, you will get mail privacy upgrades on iPad OS. In addition to that, the translate application now is more natural, it, it free flows a little bit better, can kind of understand what you're saying and just translate it really easily right on device. You could just start talking, it'll pick up the language, everything like that, and it'll just give you the, the translation you're looking for. What's up, Siri? Good evening, Nick. How can I help? Tell me a joke. At first, I didn't like the idea of having a beard. Then it grew on me. So. Siri has on-device processing, so a lot of things that you would say to it that doesn't really require internet connection will be able to be answered without internet. Also, it's gonna be a bit quicker as well. A couple other things, Apple iCloud Plus will give you more privacy, and in addition to that, you will have better accessibility features with an iPadOS 15, and that's about it. I covered pretty much what you're gonna notice day to day on the iPad OS 15. So after using this for about a day or so, I can tell you there are performance issues on beta one. The battery life is definitely not doing amazing for me right now. I was getting around 11 hours on this iPad. I'm getting around 10 now. So I lost about an hour just running this beta. Not a big deal to try out the new features, but still be aware this is not in its best form right now. Are there any disappointments? And I gotta say, yes, there's a major disappointment. No pro application still. M1 iPads came out and there's no pro applications. This is a major, major disappointment here for iPad OS 15. It makes me feel like it's still a big iPhone. And let me tell you another thing, iPad Pro, it's the pro iPad. However, why does iPad OS 15 feel like it's just becoming more of a media experience, more widgets? Where's the pro applications? Everything about this just seems more tablet-like. Now we have more widgets all over the place, app library, feels much more tablet-like. They're really continuing the whole iOS, iPadOS being a very similar theory, whereas I feel like they should go more into its own system where it has a lot more different features from iOS. This just, this is not cutting it for pros. I think certain pros are still gonna want Mac OS. So I wanna see Final Cut. We didn't see it here. Yeah, you can code and you know program, but not everybody's a programmer and everybody wants to make applications. I wanna see more pro stuff happening for iPad, it just didn't do it this year for me. But in conclusion, as a tablet, as the iPad experience itself, it is further improving its lead over the competition, giving you all of the same things you love from iPhone and giving you all the application support that comes with an iPad. And now just becoming a super media rich experience with the bigger widgets as well. So I will say as an iPad, it's gotten much better. But as a pro device, not major changes, not major upgrades in my opinion. To this one. Let me know your thoughts on iPad OS 15 down below in the comment section of this video. If you found it helpful, entertaining, informing, thumbs up. I will catch you all in the next episode. Be sure to be well and peace.